This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. And good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers. The Republican National Convention gets underway in Cleveland in a little more than a week. It would be an understatement to say that much is at stake with the party that has as its standard bearer a man who has also been a lightning rod for controversy. What does Donald Trump at the top of the ticket mean for Republicans here locally? Joining me to talk about that and much more is Paul Simpson, the chair of the Harris County Republican Party. Good morning, Paul. Always good to see you. Good morning. Thanks for having me here, Cameron. Always happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. You are you ready to go? You got your bags packed? We are ready. Bags aren't packed yet. I usually do that the night before, but okay. we'll be ready to go and raring to go, and ready to come back, uh, ready to win in November too after so, the convention. So what's it going to take? What, what is it going to take for the Republican Party to be able to grab the momentum that typically you hope to get when you come out of a convention like this to be able to go ahead and win in November? I don't think it's going to be much of a challenge at all. I think number one. Americans are tired of eight years that we consider failed and declining policies under Barack Obama. And Hillary Clinton is nothing but four more years of the status quo, more of the same. I mean, her biggest claim to fame is she didn't get indicted this week. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, not indicted yet is not the best campaign slogan, whereas the Republicans are going to come out of the convention, I think, with a very positive agenda that has been led by our House Republicans who put together a very uh, aggressive conservative reform agenda call a better way for America. Right now you're still you still have members of the Republican Party who are not exactly vigorous in their support of Donald Trump. Uh, and so what do you do to try to bring all those people together? And I guess it's his job to kind of bring people together. That's what I hear all the time that the person who is a nominee has a job of bringing everybody together and coming out of that convention united. Are you optimistic that that can happen? Well, that's ideal. I think there's a lot of things that unite Republicans. Well, a lot of things are that, ideal. Well, that's right. And you don't always get that. And I don't think any party is ever fully united. So that's not critical. And look at the Democrat side as well. I think there are going to be a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters not too enthused about Hillary Clinton, given her, all of her challenges and problems. So they've got, a long, something I learned a long time ago was, remember, the other side has problems too. So we're going to be very united, though, on a very positive positive agenda, a conservative reform agenda, a better way for America, which, is, which has already been put forth by the House Republicans, and I'm confident we'll, and hopeful that our entire party will be united behind that agenda, which includes improving the economy, improving uh, jobs, improving health care, fighting poverty, and rolling back the, the bureaucratic state. Well, you mentioned uh, Mrs. Clinton just a moment ago. Many Republicans have insisted for months that Secretary Clinton um, had broken laws with a personal server at home, using it and so forth. The director of the FBI said, just last week that that was not the case, but he was still pretty scathing in, in his comments about her. I want you to take a listen to some of what he said. Although we did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information, there is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. In looking back at our investigations, into the mishandling or removal of classified information, we cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. Okay, no charges, but you don't really need him to say charges. It sounds like what's happened after that, there's a lot going on that she may as well have been in charge as far as the Republicans are Well, no one, he, he made it very clear. She's extremely careless with classified information. She probably shouldn't even be trusted with classified information, yet she wants to be president of the United States. The other is that's his judgment call. That was a statute that doesn't require intent, and he said she didn't have intent, and therefore she shouldn't be indicted. Uh, I mean, that's a, a judgment call they made, and under this, this administration, I'm not surprised that was the result. Well, well, you make it sound like the FBI is a part of that thing, and this, this FBI director has never been accused of being a Democrat or Republican. He's been a pretty straight shooter. But I, I'm not accusing Mr. Comey of anything. I just think his judgment was off here, that we think of it, it was, and you've been, you're going to hear a lot about this from the other commentators, too, and the more uh, qualified in the legal arena, but I think it's pretty clear the statute doesn't require intent. And his big argument was she was just negligent and careless. A lot of statutes don't require intent. So whether or not she was criminally negligent, as you say, she, he pointed out how careless she was mm -hmm. and that she can't really be trusted with classified information. Okay, so you have that in one bucket. You have Mrs. Clinton, who you say is not qualified to have classified information. Then you have Donald Trump, who's done a pretty good job of insulting pretty much every minority there is in one way, shape, or form. Muslims, we're going to build a wall to keep uh, Hispanics out. He uh, used uh, uh, a web tweet this past uh, week or so from a website that was clearly from uh, an anti-Semitic website. Those kinds of things, you, how do you overcome that? 
Well, we have a much broader message than, than just, just him, and he's, he can answer the charges about whether or not he has any kind of a bias or prejudice needs to be overwhelmed. But look, we have a much bigger issues here, and, we, and what we're concerned about is keeping Harris County a good place to live um, and keeping Texas a good place to live. A good segue. No, well, that's what that's I'm good focused good. on. That's a good segue because it didn't sound like you were going to be vigorously defending Donald Trump. We're going to vigorously defend our ticket up and down the ticket. We urge our people to like all Republicans up and down the ticket. One of the things I've noticed over the last week or so, we had uh, President Obama campaigning with Mr. Mrs. Clinton. Now, President Obama has a 51% approval rating at this point, which, yeah, what are you going to say about that except, okay, but there clearly is a hope that that will impact the ticket all the way across the board. What is your hope in Harris County? We talked about that. I had uh, an academic on not long ago who indicated that the anti-Trump vote might help defeat some Harris County politicians. What do you think about that? Uh, I think there's going to be a large anti-Hillary vote, or a lot of voters may just stay home because they don't want to go vote for Hillary Clinton, who otherwise would have came out and voted for Barack Obama, uh, and were excited by him. I don't think they're excited by Hillary Clinton, who's four more years of the status quo. And one thing we know is voters want to change the status quo. So I'm confident we've got very good leadership here in Harris County. We have good state leadership. Uh, we, we have uh, a strong congressional delegation, with, like Kevin Brady, for instance, who's head of the House Ways and Means Committee, pushing forth a very aggressive conservative reform agenda. We have uh, uh, both our Governor Greg Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick are both from Harris County, and they're very actively involved, along with all of our legislators, making Harris County a great place to live, and along with our, our county leaders as well, from County Judge Ed Emmett on down, our, sh our sheriff, our DA, and the we work like on a county attorney, so all of which will make a big difference in people's lives every day in, in making Harris County a good place to live, work, and raise a family, and, there, I, and Republican leadership does that. Are there a couple of things that you think from your party that are the priorities, too? things. Like, what's the two priorities that you have going into this next in the, In the election? Mm -hmm. uh, on, well, we're going to uh, work to elect every countywide Republican, uh, which I think we'll be confident we'll be able to do both, the, from, uh, as I said, from our county offices, uh, sheriff, DA, county attorney, tax assessor, all the way down to our judges, and as well as make some gains here in the, in the legislature. You know, uh, are there any uh, ideas about trying to improve the quality of health care for children, for example, or education? I know that those things are we don't do well in the state. In well, the I, th state. I think one thing we need to, gr and, uh, need to think about is how do we solve these problems? Right. Throwing, we've thrown trillions of dollars at the so-called war on poverty in the last 50 years and made no progress. So the Democrats keep wanting to trot out 1930s solutions, the centralized solutions. I just want to know. I think we're better off with a conservative reform, and that's what the, the Republicans in the House are putting forth the, 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 in Congress as a conservative agenda to re improve health care, have free market solutions, and free up the American people well, to, I, to solve those problems I, and improve health care for all. Well, I, I think that, that that would be good, especially for children who are not getting health care that they need, and well, nothing they seems need to be it. happening yeah. right now in a state where almost all the state, no, I'm sorry, all the state offices are Republican held. So I'm not sure how much better we can get, but we'll try. Well, you're, you're just measuring how much money gets spent. You're not measuring the output. What okay. we need is a more efficient, effective system I agree for delivering health care to I everyone. Agree with and you. I think we can do that with a free market solution. That's always been a better solution. Go to Cleveland and make it happen. We will. Thank you, Cameron. Paul, always good to see you. Thanks I a lot. Appreciate it very much. Hey, I want you to know that coming up, I've got a, a great segment here. Have you ever thought about working with the FBI? Maybe you've thought about that and you don't think you have what it takes, but you could be wrong. We have the Houston FBI special agent in charge here to tell you why. Next.